Oh my god, mm. you've grown so much. Oh my, oh my god. When I saw you were this high, so you were, you were about this high. You're, you're up to here, yeah. mate. Now you're up there. You're taller than me, so you are. Yeah. I, I hate it. Yeah! And we're live. Welcome back to Heckin' Hollywood, episode numero dos. I can't believe we got this far already. Can't we're already doing another one. Can't believe we've already not been cancelled. I can't believe it either. You may notice there's another edition here. It's Callum. Hello. Oh my God. Well, thank you for having me. The Aussie flatmate. Well, former flatmate. Now. Exactly. Mm-hmm. I'm illegal. You're you're actually here illegally, aren't you? Mm-hmm. 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 Because uh, COVID's still a thing. Yes. God no. bless COVID. God bless COVID. Yeah, what, well, so you're leave. you're jetting out soon. Soon. You don't know when this podcast was recorded. Mm-hmm. You don't. You, it could have been recorded the same day. You have no idea. You have no idea. But you're leaving soon, so we have to get a podcast in. Mm-hmm. And what better way? to start a podcast then talking about Lin-Manuel Miranda <sighs> Hamilton Man but also his first musical Into the Heights which has a new musical adaptation film soon to be his last soon to be his last <laughs> that came out uh, what in the 18th 18th of June mm-hmm. it's mm-hmm. on it's everywhere it's in the cinema it's on streaming HBO Max if you're in America it's everywhere go watch it it was very good at least that's my opinion. What did you think of it, Tom? Uh, first, I'd like to state we are not sponsored by Lin Manuel, although we would like to be. Uh, in the Heights, does he like, have the money for that? No, he doesn't have the money. I don't think he has the money for that. He have just you see, every single movie. I remember Mary Poppins Returns, where he played a chimney. Oh stripper. yeah, he plays a perman and everything. Mm-hmm. But then in the latter half, he for some reason gets rich. Yeah, he always I gets. I wonder rich. why that is. Mm-hmm. Every story is about Lin Manuel Miranda getting rich. That's like the basis of his of his career. How do I get rich? And then he gets rich. He just writes story. himself getting rich. It's as simple as that. <laughs> then he makes how a you song do about it. it. Wish it, want it, do it. Um, but yes, Tom, Enter the Heights. What did you think of it? Mm-hmm. It was a lovely wee movie. Uh, nice songs, mm-hmm. nice vibes. I can't think anything more about it other than, like you said, Mary Poppins. That It's just that type of good entertainment for a summer it afternoon. It was fun. It, it was fun. It was mm-hmm. fun. I mean, coming from... From Ireland, the, mm-hmm. the, the small towns, the whole film is about getting out into the world and mm-hmm. you know, doing your own thing. Except, it's not really. No. It's about the world is big, it's scary, it will <laughs> fucking hit you. Yeah. So what you have to do is Let's just be stay. close to your community. Yeah. Let's just be, stay in it. Never Let's leave. Just stay. Stay in the heights. Mm-hmm. Stay in your small town. Don't leave. Never. And be happy where you are because everybody loves you here. In fact, so much so that if you come back, they will hound you in the street mm-hmm. and be like oh my god you're back we never thought you'd come like mm-hmm. creepy weirdos like a fucking mm-hmm. a fucking block of aunts coming up to you oh, you've grown so much oh my god mm-hmm. you've grown so much oh my oh my god when I saw you were this high so you were you were about this high you're, you're up to here mm-hmm. mate now you're up there you're mm-hmm. taller than me so you are yeah I, I hit it mm-hmm. I hit it but no the movie was very very fun Calm, I assume same thoughts very fun it was fun there were in my opinion too many side plots I feel like things didn't get round out towards the end. I I feel, I feel like like things got round up fine, and then mm. there was still a half hour of the movie, so they yeah. were like, as wrap up all that side yeah. stuff that I don't really care. Yeah. Like, I completely forgot about the kid with the who wanted to go to college or, mm-hmm. or something. Yeah, he wanted to go to college, the, eventually, yeah. but he's an illegal immigrant, mm-hmm. which yeah. I assume like you looked at and were like you were very yes. you related to that. You related to that. I don't know. You're they like, haven't come to kick me out. You're like, anymore. I want to go to college. I'm a legal immigrant. Mm-hmm. Yes. Um, I'm also a dweeb. Yes, I completely relate to the experience. 100%. Hey, come mm-hmm. on. Come, come on. We're not, we're not <laughs> talking about that here. Uh, we don't bring that up. The no mo- politics. The movie didn't talk about it up until that scene in the, um, in the, dinner, in the, eh, in the dinner room. Mm-hmm. When all of a sudden she's like, I was searched. And I was like, oh. And I think the, like, the movie plays it as like the most serious thing in the world. And I'm like, mm-hmm. oh, yeah. Do you remember? Remember, racism's a thing. And then it's back to the dancing! (laughs) Luckily, there's no racism here in an entirely ethnic community. Oh, yeah, Northern Ireland, there's no racism in Northern Ireland. Oh, that too. It's a happy, fun place. There's no racism. But nothing bad ever happened. Oh, 100%. 100%. 100%. Uh, Yeah, can we just talk about Le Manuel Miranda (laughs) and his incessant need to put himself in everything? Yeah. I was fine with him for a while. And now he's getting on my nerves. I will be honest. Lin-Manuel, if you're watching this, stop putting yourself in everything. Nobody wants to see you. Go away. That's that's my... He just appears. 
No one asks for him. Yeah. He just shows up. He just shows up. He just slides into the movie like you didn't forget about me. Like I he's, made this. He's in the op- he's in the opening song. And mm-hmm. you're like, okay, that's fine. That's right. You think he's gonna? Be that's like, cute. That's think a cute he's gonna have a little side thing. He doesn't even have a plot. He has no arc. He has no reason to be there. Did the you... next time you see him, is he like yells at Christopher Jackson? Be yeah, like, eh, he... I, I'm yeah. the king of this neighborhood, and I'm like, wait, what? He harasses I... former. <laughs> yeah, he, he harasses children. He <laughs> harasses a man who's just trying to make. I mean, I don't think ice cream drivers like make a lot of money, so yeah. he's harassing yeah. him, yeah. and he's just trying to make a living. And then you don't see him until the very end, where he like says some gibberish, mm. and then you know, and, and then he's in the fucking he's in paradise, like yeah, like the main Anthony the Rapp is looking out at all the people who like who like the community, <laughs> all all his family and friends who've impacted him, mm-hmm. and standing in the back to the right is Linda Manuel Miranda, and I'm like, what the fuck are you doing there? You could have had anybody back there. You could have had anybody. Washington mm-hmm. Heights was the Lin Manuels you met along the way. Yeah, that, that's the point of the movie. That, that, the point of the movie was that you know Lin Manuel Miranda still exists, yeah. and he's still working, and you still have to buy his products. Really, the only reason Into the Heights exists because it was meant to be a movie in like 2012, mm-hmm. and then they just canned it because they couldn't find a suitable Latina, Latino, Latinx, whatever is is correct these days. Um, lead. They were mm-hmm. like, we want Shakira or Jennifer Lopez, and I'm like, you do realize like the lead is is male. Mm. But I guess they couldn't fi- find anybody. Antonio Banderas. Mm. They, they oh. could, isn't he Spanish? Mm. I, I, no I don't know. They couldn't find anybody <laughs> yeah. apparently. So it was it wasn't gonna get made. And then Hamilton was like um the biggest thing ever. Mm. Yeah. And so they were like, oh, okay, we're we're gonna make this now. And like yeah, you, you can you can sense that. Although I feel like like the play I I don't know the play or the musical at all. So I feel like there's a lot of stuff they cut out or changed. Because if I know Lin Manuel Miranda, I'm like, oh, there's probably a load of stuff in there that was really dumb. And they well, were like, when was this? Out. When was it actually released? I think it was written in like 05. Oh, and then they had an off Broadway in 2007, and 2008 it went properly on Broadway. Because I was really confused as to what the decade was. Because then you hear them mention a John Wick line. I was like, oh, so oh, this yeah. is modern day. Uh, yeah, and they have like iPhones. Yeah. It, it, one of them had your phone. They did. They... I was like, okay, so that puts it bef- like after 2018. 2018 mm-hmm. and after. But the blackout happened in like the late two thousands, thereabouts. In late two thousands, or was it before then? Like when, oh, like when the famous it, blackout in yeah. New York. When oh, that it, was like in the seventies. Oh, in the seventies. Okay, yeah. so was there another blackout? Uh, maybe these things just happen all the time. Oh, okay. Um, yeah. Oh, well, I, it's not based on a true story, so like that's yeah. It's not Hamilton, which is absolutely based on a true story. Everything mm-hmm. happened in that. Everything in Hamilton happened. Uh, they were all black. Mm-hmm. Uh, <laughs> They just rewrote the history books. <laughs> oh, they yeah. just rewrote the history. We gotta make sure nobody knows the Founding Fathers were black. That'd be an interesting... That would be a plot That'd be an interesting little thing. Only the Founding Fathers would have to probably be like a thousand years. Remember in Star Wars? When like, Return of the Jedi happens? Mm-hmm. And then 30 years later, like, ah oh, yeah, the Jedi, it's, it's all true. It's, and then they, they think it's like a myth and shit. Like, it's, it was 30 years ago. That's like saying like, that's like saying the Troubles were a myth. It, uh, and it I'm happened. like, mate, it's, it was only 30, 40 years ago, mate. Like, it doesn't happen that long ago. Like, are you all right? Yeah. <laughs> it was a different time. No, my car is older than that. That was, that, that was really strange to me. Mm-hmm. That was, and it's strange in, um, it would be strange in Hamilton if that was what the plot of Hamilton was. But it's not. Anyway, Into the Heights. Into the Woods. Once, once, into, once the heights. into the Woods. That's another musical. Yeah. Maybe. Starting Lin Manuel. Yeah. <laughs> no. He, I mean, he's, cro- he's crossing, man. He's the uh, Lin Manuel Miranda's with Disney. He's mm-hmm. with HBO. He's with Warner Brothers. He's he's working everywhere, bro. Mm-hmm. He's, he is a hot creator. He's a hot creator, even though all of his stuff is very similar. <laughs> yeah. And does, and to be fair, it it's does all bank. about New York. It does bank. I mean, mm-hmm. Disney like they they banked on that Hamilton mm-hmm. uh, buying that Hamilton live show. I'm like, Whoa, that was. Yeah, that was paid off. That was terrific. That got me interested in musicals. I know, right? Like, it, it, no, Lin. Hamilton's terrific. It's wonderful. It's a point. It's wonderful. You can see... It's a masterpiece. You can see that he really grew. Uh, you said, like, maybe Into the Heights you might have preferred. Yeah. Uh, I think it's just the tone and the setting. I don't know. I Of course, Hamilton's bigger. It's that epic of, like, the founding fathers of America. So to anybody that's American, that's brilliant. Yeah. But I don't know. I find the small nature of this just being, like, a block in New York yeah. and all the troubles revolving around the mixing and matching of all of them. I find that just a lot, just a lot more energetic and entertaining, because you don't have to worry about entire armies. Even though you don't have to, but 
it's big scale stuff versus small scale mm. homey things mm. and I prefer that home like five six really important characters that have like three connections to each other yeah like I prefer that yeah but personally I preferred Hamilton having a more focused like you had Alan Burr on the side he Alan had his Burr? store Alan Burr what the hell is that Alan Burr Aaron Burr Alan Burr, Alan Alan Burr. Burr. <laughs> Alan Burr if it is Alan Burr sir <laughs> No, you had Burr and Hamilton, and that was basically it. Like, there were characters, but it was more focused on the two. It was very, it, from, mm. like, the opening, you could very... But from the second song, the second song is... is Well, the first song is called Alexander Hamilton, mm -hmm. and the second song is Aaron Burr, sir, mm -hmm. which is not a really recurring joke, Yeah, but it's... The, the, the whole thing is about... Mm -hmm. duh and duh, uh, Which is... Yeah, I mean, it, you immediately you get into it, and to be fair, Into the Heights begins with a really terrific song, and you get, mm. it's a very long song, yeah. that essentially tells you the, the you know, e everybody here and everyone has this close-knit community and they all care about each other, because mm -hmm. there's no real, like, you have, like, a, what's her name, Nina and her father, mm -hmm. and they have a bit of a, you know, yeah. but there's not much conflict, yeah, yeah. because they all are such a close-knit mm -hmm. group. Mm -hmm. uh, and I think that maybe hinders it a bit because then any conflict that does come in sounds yeah. the father and Nina stuff which I thought was quite good yeah like whenever um, I should probably get up the yeah the names get, get up the names uh, we just watched it and there's a lot of names there's a lot of characters yeah uh, so please don't hit us for not knowing characters yeah, yeah. they're like musical theatre fans how do you not know In the Heights and I'm like I never heard of that I'll mm -hmm. have you know I've watched this 20 times already I've watched Hamilton like 5 <laughs> times and like I, I did not know Into the Heights was a thing because I don't care enough mm. like I just don't uh, Into but the you Heights. were the theatre student Jack yeah like, hey bro bro. I like I like theatre but I also know that a lot of theatre is stupid a lot of theatre is really dumb and a lot of musicals are terrible give us an example yeah. please I'm not ready for this kind Spider of thing Spider-Man Turn Off the Dark I want to know. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I remember. <laughs> like, horrendous. Horrendously. Almost got like, the... Do you know the way we always complain? Killed. We always complain about Hollywood and just, like, they're just churning out crap because they mm -hmm. know it'll sell. People think Broadway is, like, high... Because, you know, it's a high class. You go into the yeah. theatre. You They can still turn out an equal amount of shit mm -hmm. because at the end of the day it's like okay Broadway we gotta have a new thing we can't just keep showing Wicked and Les Mis and yeah. Phantom Yard. we can't keep showing the same things we gotta do new stuff. So that's why things like End of the Heights, mm -hmm. End the Heights, End the Heights, you know, Hamilton, Hades Town, Hades Town, yeah. Ca uh, one of my favorites, uh, Catch Me If You Can. Oh, that's a wonderful one. I love bring, that bring movie. Bring that back. Bring that back. That's a great movie. Yeah, yeah, that's a great one. And, they, and it makes a really good. Um, I performed one of the songs in a in my school. What, what what do we call it? Like the end of year. It was like a big. All right. I don't know end of, end of year performance presentation everyone did yeah. performances and stuff uh, our friend did singing in the rain oh yeah which, yeah, was, yeah, which yeah. was wonderful mm -hmm. I did uh, don't break the rules which was a bop mm -hmm. fantastic wow. fantastic musicals are fun but they can also be terrible there's my opinion on that uh, oh that's right he had a really complicated name Usnavi oh yeah oh uh, yeah Us Usnavi because uh, I'm not even going to try his Us dad Usnavi. named him after the first boat he saw whenever he came into New York named, which uh, was a which was a US Navy boat the, does that mean James Cameron named the Navi after a fucking boat yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Jim, that wouldn't surprise me yeah. James Cameron naming something after a boat God, God bless the name I, <laughs> that was I, a whole other thing I can't I can't wait to like change bodies and be with the race of people that I love, the Titanics. <laughs> <laughs> the 50 leagues under the sea. <laughs> uh, These are my people. He did it so he'd get a US Army contract. <laughs> it was propaganda the whole time. Yeah. <laughs> Wait a minute, this has been propaganda the whole time? Always, Always was. has been. So, Usnavi. Mm -hmm. What was I even saying about Usnavi? Uh, we're talking about their conflicts being set up. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, Hamilton has conflicts, like, immediately. Like, mm -hmm. like they set up the relationship pretty early on. Uh, Anthony Ramos, mm -hmm. uh, Usnavi, and, uh, what was it, Vanessa, was it? Was that her name? Vanessa? Uh, We're going to go with, yeah, Vanessa. I think so. Him and Vanessa have, like, this chemistry immediately. You know, they're very, like, hot and heavy. The movie is horny as hell. Very but thirsty. we'll get to that. Thirsty. We'll get to that. It's yeah. very thirsty. We'll the movie even in admits to it. It does. But they have this immediate, immediate chemistry, sexual chemistry, the whole nine yards. And then, like, once the blackout happens, 
then all of a sudden they're just like, hey, you weren't down, you weren't dancing with me. What do you want to be with me? And like it's so forced, mm-hmm. and it's like the movie remembered. Oh, that's right, conflict is the source of drama. Mm. You know, intention and obstacle. You know, drama. Let's like have some butting of the heads. Thanks, Siri. Siri's um, joining us. Siri just wants to get on the podcast. Apple's just trying to get into everything, bro. Let, let um, my trying to sneak in here. Let's through Siri. trying to sneak in through the the Miranda one. Um, but no, yeah, the lack of conflict isn't really a big deal to me because I was having such fun, mm-hmm. and like it, it's a really lovely, uh, lovely like high spirited film. It's well shot. Yes, a lot yeah. of the shot, especially uh, towards the end, mm-hmm. the uh, dancing on the side of the oh yeah, that that was lovely. Uh, lots of great songs, lots of high energy, um, but yeah, just not a lot of conflict, which yeah, isn't yeah. as big a problem because the conflict seems to come yeah. from just trying to get out. Mm-hmm. So I appreciated that. I don't know if you really needed, yeah, if you needed mm-hmm. to have like these little things. Mm-hmm. Um, but Hamilton definitely is is the is to me is superior because it's so intriguing. Like the really, especially because you've got you know Hamilton as the guy who's like just constantly like going for it. He's constantly going for it. Aaron Burr is like I'm gonna win. Mm-hmm. I'm gonna win, which is uh, I don't know that feels like me. I mm-hmm. feel like I feel I feel like I was Aaron Burr like when I was younger. I mm-hmm. just be like I don't want to get a job in McDonald's. <laughs> I I, I want to win, and and then like a, a filmmaking opportunity will fall into my into my lap, and then I finish uni and I ended up in McDonald's. <laughs> They should make a play about that. They should yeah. make a play about that. Starring Lin Manuel. <laughs> <laughs> Written by Lin Manuel Miranda. Mm-hmm. In McDonald's. <laughs> um, uh, I wanted to say though on the topic of you were saying the intention and obstacle that I, I agree that they don't really have massive ones that everybody's going for mm. but they do point out especially in like the lottery song that everybody in the heights has what they called like the the dream or the small dream i mm-hmm. forget what it was in uh, the language but it was like just because everybody here wasn't working towards like like the hero's journey idea Everybody that lived there had this small thing that, like, if they had ninety six thousand dollars, they would they would do something with it. They had a dream that they could fulfill, and I felt like that's what made it, uh, like you said, still good. Where yeah. although there wasn't obstacles in everybody's way, there was still everybody had that kind of. You could determine somebody's personality by what their like dream was. Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. and I'll be fair. Like, it sets it up. One per a character wants something mm-hmm. like now he wants to leave uh what's your name of your other girl who wants him to stay oh vanessa vanessa, vanessa. Yeah. she yeah. wants him to stay and make a life here and at the end it comes full circle i don't know if, it just doesn't feel like there's enough in the center mm. even though the film's two and a half hours long precisely yeah. yeah i think that's the thing as well as like as, as as lovely as that sequence was with the uh the abuela or you know the, yeah the, the, the granny as, as nice as that sequence was, mm-hmm. it was very well shot, very, uh, they got some jazz elements in there in the music. It was very nice. Mm-hmm. I don't know if you need it. I don't even know if she needs to die necessarily. Yeah. Like, you could just have her... I, honestly, I feel like maybe that's one of the things that's like... Uh, you need... You know, I mean... Does she just die in the play? Like, maybe like off camera, like she just passes away, like or like off stage. I don't know, that was away. a great dance sequence to be passing up. For yeah, people. that was pretty I know, nice. but it's also something that... I, it's I, really they, something you can't mm-hmm. do on a stage they, they probably could have yeah. but like that was so kind of amazing within the film because they were able to go to the subway and, yeah. and everything like that and then of course the great you know where she's going up the stairs yeah. instead of taking the mm-hmm. she, which symbolizes her you know she she, she, she came she's in the hard way and, she's, yeah. and when she's going out she's still going to take the hard way because that's all she knows mm-hmm. Yeah, um, there, there is a lot there and it's very fun it's very upbeat and it still manages to which I think a lot of musicals fail to do when they're turned into film adaptions is get that emotion down Mm -hmm. and be very direct and very personal for the film language while also still managing to elicit that massive sort of you know yeah that that hugeness i think it handles that it's just again what you were saying it's just there's too much so they don't have a lot of it it feels like like rent in a way like rent had like like very good little individual pieces but then you put it in a movie and it's just like flipping around all the time. There's the, mm. there's the, the, uh, the gay couple and, w- and one of them gets AIDS. And then you have the, the, the rock star character who, who falls in love with the woman who's a drug addict. And then you have the filmmaker man. And then you have the, the lesbian couple. And, but then one of them's getting married, I think. Mm. And, and she's like, 
moo with me <laughs> and there's just a lot of shit there's a lot of stuff and I'm like I don't know why all these musicals need to be so well I know why because musicals are like three hours long because yeah. you're meant to take a night and go and see it and have an intermission and the mm-hmm. whole thing so then when they make movies they're either super long and super like you know, uh, what's the word obtuse just like ridiculous amounts yeah. of crap in there or they cut them down which I feel like this was I feel like it was cut yeah, down even at yeah. two half even, hours even at two and a half an hours I was like mm, I think I heard there was co- songs cut I'm like mm, okay which probably rounded out a lot of the other characters stuff but it's not like the songs were like that's what I loved in Hamilton is that I feel like so much information was being uh, provided mm. without uh, within each song it yeah. wasn't just like like there's a song like about the, you know about the the lottery ticket that's yeah. a big long song which is fun and epic mm-hmm. but ultimately all it tells you is everybody really wants to win money yeah. whereas in Hamilton you take a song uh, I'm trying to think you take like the end of uh, act act one um, where Hamilton's singing about you know I'm not you know I'm not yeah. throwing away my shot. It's uh, all tied down in his personal confidence. And it confidence. goes through all these. It goes through Angelica. It goes through Burr. It goes through, uh, you know, after the war and went back to New York. And it's mm-hmm. telling the story mm-hmm. while also giving you these these characters, giving their opinions on what's happening, what they what their wants are, what their, you know, obstacles are. Mm-hmm. And it's just a really tight form of of, of doing it. Hamilton's not much longer. I think it's, what, two, two hours and 20 minutes? I think so. It tells a much bigger, more sprawling story in the same length of time as... Mm-hmm. Into the Heights but Into the Heights I think wastes a lot of time by having these big musical numbers which ultimately end up are fun but they're empty because they don't further the story and I think especially in the second half we were like I don't think you need to sing this Yeah, I think you could get by yeah. much more and just like telling you straight and, and instead they sing about it and I'll be fair like this movie is very specifically mm-hmm. talking about the struggles of a community mm-hmm. and it tries to encapsulate the entire story of people within the community, mm-hmm. people who try to break out and do better, but struggle with being away from it. Yeah. People who are struggling with being oppressed by the system they're under. People who just want to get away from it and try a new life. Like, there's a lot of like, it's very specifically trying to tell different stories for each person. Yeah. Mm. But when you put it into a context of a film, you gotta kind of focus on the one. It's it's strange. And I don't really know if I could, if a my position can say, ah, you can cut these other stuff. They're not important when it's talking about a community. Oh, no, that's true. I mean, I, I think that's, that's something that I do like in the film is like all these different elements. Mm-hmm. I just think their, their use of time isn't that great and mm-hmm. their focus on certain things. Like, I think one or two stories could be cut. Mm-hmm. I just think it's a case of, uh, they're not using their time that well. I think some of the songs could be shortened. Mm-hmm. So, and then like the ending I feel like they could just probably get that because I think a lot of the energy just whoosh. yeah it really feels like the movie's over at some point it's yeah. not a Roland Emmerich film it's not like Independence Day where it's all these side plots and they're all terrible and you want to kill yourself mm. like it's not that it, they're all still you know engaging yeah. but you're watching them going like I kind of want like you know by the, uh-huh. by the seventh song and it's like over five minutes and you're like eh. mm. they're, that, that's my if I had a big issue with it it's like I like the songs, but I wish more happened within them mm. to further story or at least give me more of a... Because yeah. all the characters are very... Because there, there isn't a lot of conflict with anybody else and their conflict essentially just is, eh, we want to grow and we want to you know get out of here, but mm-hmm. we also want to stay together. You know, We want both at the same point, have our cake and eat it too. They're just so big and like especially you know, the, the salon mm. girls, yeah. not a lot there. Mm-hmm. Especially at the end where she's like, oh, you could sing anything as long you know just sing it mm-hmm. and then she's like yeah I just say I'm from Boston or Queens or whatever mm-hmm. and I'm like okay I don't know you as a character like you like I don't know you at all not that they need to be fleshed out dramatically mm. but that's another thing where I'm like okay this movie's two hours and 20 minutes again I'm, I come back to that runtime yeah. because you feel it by the end mm-hmm. and you think okay well how could you better spend this time if the movie was hour 50 yeah. no problem that's fine it was, it was fun but as soon as you cross that 210 mark it's like, mm, mm. I think use of time is like is important. I don't think you can just go, ah, like, you know, people look at like the Irishman and go, oh, it was three and a yeah. half hours. Why are you complaining about two hours twenty? Because the Irishman, we said this, needed to be that long because that last half hour wouldn't have felt as mm-hmm. as gut wrenching yeah. as it is if you had just watched a twenty minute movie beforehand. Yeah. It needs to be. It, you need to feel like you've watched a life, 
and it doesn't waste that time it's still a lot of good stuff in there mm-hmm. um but yeah that's that, that's my it's, biggest issue it's it just it's just use of time yeah don't don't get us wrong yeah we love the movie we enjoyed it great we're fun. just nitpicking bastards we love to nitpick that's all it is we're nitpicking mm-hmm. Lynn manuel you go get your best song oscar and nothing else <laughs> That's most likely what we're getting from Sweep this. all the awards again. Do you think it will? Or do you think maybe Disney will come in? Ah, uh, well, what do we have coming in? Uh, is um, West Side Story isn't this year, is it? West Side Story is this year. Yeah. It was meant to be December of last year, and then this thing called um, the pandemic. My, I, don't think uh, can, I don't think you could say the C word on, on YouTube. Okay. Or yeah. you'll get demonetized. Oh, oh no. I think. We're not can we make still money? not say it? I don't know. What the hell, YouTube? What the hell? Uh, no, I don't think you could say it. Oh, well. But yeah, no, it was meant to come out in December last year, and then uh, it got delayed. So now it's coming out this year, and the trailer looked amazing. Mm-hmm. I, I was shocked because they didn't. Well, did they kind of? They kind of tried to like include Ansel Elgort as little as possible because, of course, he's uh, a sex pervert, apparently. Oh no! Oh really? Uh, apparently, oh. Uh, he was like texting women or something. I don't know. Uh, yeah. oh, I, I was, never is it surprising? Stopped. Probably yeah. not. It's Hollywood with their sex perverts. Mm. Uh, I can't wait though. It looks wonderful. Steven Spielberg. He grew yeah. up on West Side Story. That mm-hmm. man, well, I say he grew up. He was in his 20s. Mm. But, you know, but the, the man knows a good musical when he sees one. I, I think this is his first. I think it's his first musical, so it'll be interesting okay. to see how Spielberg... I just lo- watched... Mm-hmm. Do you see the trailer? I have. The shot of them, like, coming together like this. Mm-hmm. Like, all silhouetted. Great. Great. As soon as I saw that shot, I'm like, I'm in good hand. I could turn it off there. Yeah. Don't need to say anymore. I don't, I don't know why I need to watch the trailer, if I'm honest. Like, it's, it's Spielberg. Mm. You know what? I have faith. I have faith in Spielberg that will make a fantastic film that I will not have a problem with. Or I will. I'm not sure. <laughs> well, <laughs> uh, we don't know. Uh, he kind of slipped at this point. <laughs> well, uh, well ha- he is a very old man. Crazy mm. old. Ridley Scott dropped years ago. Mm. Alien Covenant. Just, he's, he's slipped, mate. Ag- Exodus, Gods and Kings with the blackface. That was... Oh, yeah. Yeah, I remember Joel Edgerton in the blackface. Yep. Like, mm. That's just... It's the kind of thing that makes you go... I, be- I believe an elderly man made that mm-hmm. same thing with like Clint Eastwood you know it's like I believe an elderly man made that yeah <laughs> that's why I was when I watched Sully I'm like yeah I it's like an elderly man telling you a story that could be told in 10 minutes and he takes an hour and a half mm-hmm. and you're like yeah yeah I can believe grandpa, that grandpa I gotta go to the store I gotta go grandpa you're... I'll come see you later <laughs> <laughs> I promise I'll see you moving <laughs> um, um, yeah so to, to finish out uh, I would like to talk about since we're on the Manuel Miranda, uh, Hamilton. Now, we talked a little bit about Hamilton, but the thing that people are always talking about is when is Hamilton going to get a film adaption? Yes. Because everything gets a film adaptation. Everything. Mm-hmm. If it's popular, I, make it a film, make it a book, make it a comic, make it everything because money, I, capitalist society. I don't want it. You don't want it. I'll be, I'll be honest, as, as, a, as a filmmaker, I want it for the for the sheer curiosity of seeing how somebody would handle it mm. it's the same way I go and see like most modern movies it's like I just want to see how you handle something mm-hmm. yeah. I'm just curious no but you know do you do anything different how do you view the story mm-hmm. uh, but in terms of like Hamilton that's something where I'm like like how do you do that because unlike in Into the Heights I feel like unless somebody's going to correct me and say actually it's very different they had to rewrite Into the Heights because it was such a Mm-hmm. It was like it was a lot like Hamilton. I'm mm-hmm. like, okay, fair enough. I didn't research it. Sorry, um, but Hamilton is so close that it changes settings. Yeah, it changes yeah. settings. It changes time periods. It'll just jump, jumps. It's it'll mm-hmm. just jump through, and it's like, how do you? And the, it's nonstop singing. It's like Lena's. Yeah. just nonstop. So how do you not make that feel like a two hour and twenty minute music video? Mm-hmm. And how do you keep that emotion? while also kind of incorporating film elements and, and film techniques mm-hmm. and language that will allow it to play as a film and not as a filmed, you know. Because there's plenty of, like, there's plenty of, like, pickup shots in the Hamilton stage show mm-hmm. yeah. where, like, they, you know, it'll get a low angle and it'll feel really cinematic, like, that's from, especially from the trailer. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. You can see a lot of good shots. Yeah. But how would you do that in a film? Tom, do you have any ideas for what they could do for a Hamilton motion picture? No, no. Uh, animate it. That's my idea. Yeah. Okay, mm. animation. That would actually be interesting because I know that you know from from like all like I feel like I, I love Pixar 
and I love Disney. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I think those animated films are classics, but I feel like in terms of actually exploiting the potential of animation, mm-hmm. they more <laughs> focus back on realism mm. in, in the sense of time and space matters and they have certain rules, whereas you think of, you know, I, I think of the animes that I've seen, even ones that are a bit more grounded, like a Death Note, mm-hmm. just what they do with with film structure and, and language just enables time just to kind of pass, you know, in a, in different ways. Yeah. It feels different. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, it's it's the reason why you, you make a live action adaptation of something that's animated. It's like, it mm-hmm. feels weird. Yeah. Because it was designed to be... It's like why Batman could never match animated Batman because animated mm-hmm. Batman doesn't move like any normal being could. Yeah, you can't be fucking two hundred and forty pounds and move like a rabbit. Like you mm-hmm. can't, you can't. So that's not a bad idea. Yeah, mm. and uh, if anything, that's like that's what originally what Cats was gonna be. Yeah, I was Cats gonna was gonna be animated. Mm-hmm. Um, Steven Spielberg. I don't think he was gonna make it, but he was gonna produce it. Yeah, and seeing the Tom Hooper Cats. Mm-hmm. Yes. That's a boy. Please animate <laughs> over like the raw film animate footage. Animate over the, the 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 release the butthole cut. Yeah, draw, <laughs> draw on it like with Ooh. crayons. But no, that's actually a really good. That's, mm-hmm. that's a good point. I could definitely see that happening, and they wouldn't have to do much. Yeah, like yeah. the songs as is, just you know, where mm-hmm. are they meant to be? And then you could get really stylistic mm-hmm. with it. Mm-hmm. Um, uh, Callum. Uh, you have an idea? I'm coming around to the animated idea. Yay! Because I win. Yeah. Trying to make because it's a, also a historical picture. Yeah. And historical pictures are very spatial things, but mm. Hamilton is very much not like it's set deliberately to be like quick cutting between set sets. It jumps around, but you can't. I mean, based on my limited imagination, I don't know if you could really do that with a strict historical uh, picture, even if it is a musical. Mm-hmm. Like, I yeah. think you need to be able to flow really quickly yeah. between scenes I think it's something that you would need to really go avant-garde with mm. you couldn't make it as a you know a yeah. you couldn't do like a Tom a, Hooper you couldn't yeah you couldn't make like exactly. a Les Mis or a Phantom of the Opera you couldn't make a straight kind of adaptation yeah. oh just put them in the sets they're meant to be in and, yeah and just make it a bit bigger add a sword fight you know you, you, <laughs> you know you can't uh, you can't just do that you have to think about the film language of it because Hamilton you know even going to uh, satisfied the way their use of time mm-hmm. and kind of going backwards like you like just looking at that as a as a, as a wannabe filmmaker uh, I go that feels like a that feels like something they would give to you in you know in film school how would you make this and 30 people would go away and come back with 30 completely different ideas of how they would film it how they would execute it what different techniques techniques they would use and that again is the really interesting thing is mm-hmm. how would you do this my whole thing with it is it would be difficult but you'd need to be able to have a director who has a really distinct visual style mm-hmm. that really has all can ha- because Hamilton as we said before the songs ha- have a lot of information within them so you need a director whose frames have a lot in them mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Michael Bay <laughs> Jack we discussed this oh, coming back Michael oh, Bay no, come back no Michael Bay. Now, hear me out. No. He would, in the same way that um, uh, I'm sure the uh, previous um, sex offenders need to have people, like, watching them to make sure that they don't, you know, commit again. Mm-hmm. Uh, Michael Bay would need somebody looking over his shoulder constantly being like, no, Michael, that's racist. That's homophobic. <laughs> that's sexist. Michael, that's not even in the play. Mm-hmm. No. So he needs somebody to say no to him. Because Michael Bay, I don't think, has ever been told no. Mm-hmm. His films reek of somebody who is just doing whatever they want. And not in, like, in a Zack Snyder way. Like, in a, where it's like, ah, he's having fun. Like, Michael Bay just seems super corporate. Mm-hmm. But annoyingly, he's got the style for it. He's got that big, grandiose. So if you could just have him in the... Vi- Hire him as a cinematographer. Yeah, like director of photography. Because he's, yeah, yeah. he's an insane technical talent. And just... Mm-hmm. kind of rope him back a bit I would say David Fincher since him and Michael Bay were uh, colleagues back in the mm-hmm. day they were both considered very you know it's just that Fincher is a high art major yeah. mm-hmm. and Michael Bay likes fast cars mm-hmm. that's literally the Car- difference between frame. them but they're both very yeah. but David, 
I don't know. I feel like Fincher would just look at Hamilton and go, this is stupid. Mm-hmm. Like he wouldn't be into the material. Whereas I think, because Michael Bay does have a respect for West Side Story. He has no idea why. Yeah. Other than he likes the cuts and he likes the, and he likes the shots. Mm-hmm. The Every frame of painting. You know, I, I went back and actually listened to that. Uh, oh. I don't think I listened. I think I read it. There's like a transcript mm-hmm. of him watching West Side Story. And yeah, like he doesn't really like the film. Mm-hmm. but he, he knows why it works so well mm. and I'm like if you can just make sure that there's somebody there who understands like happily if you want to have it Lin-Manuel Miranda and Michael Bay oh God. That, fair enough <laughs> that's two egos together that could yeah. destroy that could, that could destroy it but I'd be interested mm. I'd be interested again it's not something that I think needs to be made it's just a pure you know I mean I think you can do much worse like because the last thing you need is someone stuffy and trying to squeeze it into a film context and just make it like completely realistic is the word like yeah. Yeah. non-surrealized mm-hmm. I don't think you could, you could do it in, in the way like uh, what's that Sofia Coppola movie Marie Antoinette yeah is that it yeah where like she's wearing like Converse mm-hmm. and like there's pop and mm-hmm. pop rock playing and it's like automatically by doing that it it pulls you out and makes you like see it from a distance I think mm-hmm. um and, and in the same way like Django and Shane has some rap in it yeah and that to me is fine because Tarantino never works in reality all his yeah. films make a very big play to go this isn't reality I am showing you something you are at the movies and you're enjoying a film I'm not trying to suck you in I'm just trying to say you're watching a movie have fun be emotional and allowing yourself to be so in a way I think that's the way Hamilton should be mm-hmm. Tarantino shouldn't direct it he, shouldn't, he, oh, should, no, he no. shouldn't direct a musical no just don't do it um, I just don't think so no um, not saying he couldn't but just eh, I, I don't think a, I say like a white dude shouldn't be doing it and then I just said Michael Bay should <laughs> the king of white dudes yeah, yeah. I'm just, eh. can't get more white than him oh no Tar- Tartan <laughs> needs a he needs a if he was going to direct he'd need to like up his visual style a bit more mm. um, but no you're you're exactly correct like it can't just be this boring it couldn't even be like drab like yeah. all period pieces are drab mm-hmm. and boring looking and yeah. like super grounded like, like, like the favorite's not a bad movie it's very good yes. but the color palette of it is like like brown oh it's yeah. like it's like disgusting intentionally mm-hmm. you know because like that's that's just how England looks yeah but I don't want to watch um, wait for it being performed against the backdrop of like that you just muck yeah like, that's like just nasty yeah. grey like all state in the background I mean like, I don't I don't want that that, that just sounds horrible but you also like it's a film that deals with like it brings up slavery mm-hmm. it brings up really harsh atrocities and you're like I don't, I don't a... know I don't know if I really want a bright coloured so yeah. Yeah, that's where I I think oh, out of out of all ideas animated would probably be the way to go mm-hmm. but you would need to do it in a way that kind of rides that line between realism mm-hmm. uh, because you're dealing with a pretty serious subject yes and also kind of that light hearted kind of mm-hmm. aspiring rotoscope it that's Rot- what I was thinking <laughs> Ralph Baxi it rotoscope like uh, Ralph Baxi's American Pop mm-hmm. where it goes through like the history is the rotoscoping like uh, what's that movie Virtual Linklater Waking Life Waking Life yeah. yeah is that rotoscoping mm-hmm. yeah. I could see that yeah didn't they make a Van Gogh movie rotoscope uh, they... that was yeah, that was where every single frame was painted in the style of a Van Gogh. That was very interesting. That was very. That interesting. was very interesting. Again, that but that, that's the thing as well. There was also a... an animated Hamilton would sell. Yeah, a rotoscoped Hamilton would not sell no. because people would mm-hmm. look at that and go, "That that's looks weird. weird." People aren't really a fan of rotoscoping. Anymore. They're not. They're not a fan. I think it looks good. Yeah, but, yeah. stylistically, that's the spot. There's also a Van Gogh film, Willem de Photoscoped. Willem yeah, de Photoscoped. Oh my god! That's that was, all I that wanted was like, to contribute. That was a. Pretty no, that's good movie. all. <laughs> that was a pretty good movie. Yeah, mm-hmm. I mean. Never watched it. I know, I know. It's pretty good. <laughs> yeah. But the joke was even better. The joke was better <laughs> than the movie. That was the point of the movie. So you could make that joke. That was the whole point of the podcast. Thanks for having me, guys. That was the whole point. <laughs> Callum Flanagan, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, um, I'll leave. So, yes, Callum, anything? I don't know. Do you make things? I don't know. I don't do anything. You don't do anything. Okay. I'm kicked out of the country. I'm not oh, that's so Australian. True. I don't contribute. That's so true. Well, hopefully, you don't get killed on your way out. Mm-hmm. Yep. Tom, anything to plug? Uh, I've got my YouTube channel. Me is Tommy Tombo, and yeah, you can go and watch it. Find anything new in the pipeline? 
Uh, nothing major in the pipeline, but I'm starting to build stuff up. Okay, automatically, that's terrible. Always say there's something in the pipeline. That keeps people engaged. So he's lying. There is stuff in the pipeline. Go subscribe to me as Tommy Tambo. Great channel. He has a great video on Psychonauts. That's a fun uh, Oh, and, and Truck Simulator. Thank you. That was terrific. Mm-hmm. That was terrific. I'm, I, I'm building you up, so... Because yeah. you're not. Go, go watch Jack. He... Yeah, I he's make, doing this. I make he videos. does this. I make videos. Mm-hmm. You can watch them if you want. One of them has a thousand views, apparently. Apparently, <laughs> apparently. <laughs> Allegedly. Look, like guys, I'm not saying I'm letting the power go to my head, but you know, I'm yeah. I'm, I'm going pretty viral these days. That's that's all. It's I'm pretty saying. hot right now. I yeah. am I am pretty hot right now. It's I'm like Ansel. It's... Tune in for the next video when he's completely outgrown us. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I can never outgrow you guys. Well, you're leaving, so I guess I'm outgrowing you. Mm-hmm. Oh well. See you next week. Do we do it next week? Uh, next time. <laughs> See you in two weeks for another episode of Hacklin' Hollywood. See Hopefully we're not cancelled by office. this. Bye. 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 He's, He's getting, gone. He's getting deported. The cops are after him. He's getting deported.